I'm telling them that I can't breathe Clearly he don't give a damn about my plea His ancestors used to hang us on trees Today they identify as rogue police You see I'm black for that I'm a threat to America My rise is dead fall and their fall is evident Blood on your hands is heavier than an elephant Open up America's closet Welcome to my channel I'm a Tonya, and this is Reignite Sandy Speaks. Again, welcome to my channel. So family, what type of fuckery are we going to discuss today? What kind of anti-black fuckery is the latest atrocity committed to black Americans in this country? Ajika Owens was murdered by Susan Lorenz. And family... Again, we are documenting the atrocities and the inequalities committed to black Americans in hopes of getting an updated 14th Amendment. Okay, uh, Ajika, we all do, I don't know if you guys know the story, but um, I guess there was um, some conflict between two neighbors um, in Ocola, Florida, and the woman apparently terrorizes the neighborhood. It's an apartment complex, and the woman's name is Susan Lorenz. And apparently, um, she has been terrorizing the neighborhood and specifically saying uh, racial slurs to children. And um, I guess she was harassing the kids. And when the story came out, you guys, what I, I, it's certain things I want you guys to notice. Um, When I tell these stories, there's certain things I want to highlight because what we are actually doing is comparing contrasting when um, things happen to white people opposed to black people. Okay. When it, we first heard of it, we heard the story. It appeared like these children were playing on Susan Lorenz's property. Like they were on her property and she was, you know, calling them out about being on her property. But as we further, and, and, and what, I don't understand why this is what's reported. And I don't understand how, what kind of news is reporting um, this misinformation or misleading us. Because it's an apartment complex. She lived in an apartment complex. And the kids were playing in the field that belongs to the property owners of their apartment complex. And Miss Lorenz has a history of harassing the children, calling them lewd racial slurs, being aggressive and flipping them off. This is a 58-year-old woman, 58-year-old white woman who's aggressive and she terrorizes the neighborhood. So apparently she shot Ajika Owens through the door while her 10-year-old son was standing by her. And it's based on conflict that happened where it's two different stories. The story is the kids were playing on the field and she threw the iPad at them. And, and it was her their iPad. I guess as we um, as the start, time goes on, we'll discover exactly what happened. But the story is by the children in the family that she threw an iPad at them. Um, what... The murderer is saying that she threw a skate at them. And she I think she hit the daughter. Okay, so that's why the mom was knocking on the door. And the thing, the, one of the main things I want to focus on, family, is that how people in this country are comfortable with killing black people. This is the story. The story is that Black lives are not mattering. Black lives don't matter in this country. That again, this is a white supremacist collective conscious, but black people are secondary and white people are superior. According to this white supremacist consciousness in this country. And you know, as we do this, I believe, of course, racism is nationwide. Um, but more rampant and more acceptable, accepted in, in certain states. And I believe California, Florida, Texas, Minnesota, there, there are a few. 
There are probably some other states, but the news is suppressing it. It's not making the news. But we're going to focus on California, Florida, Houston, Minnesota. Florida apparently has a really big issue with white supremacy. And in the case of Achika Owens, I really want to follow the story because we want to make sure that what happened to Trayvon Martin doesn't happen in this case. So the sheriff was um, reluctant or he did not arrest this woman immediately. That because of some stand your ground self-defense law in Florida, that they want to get the information. And so I want to discuss this in the minds of reasonable people. If the door was shut, she was inside her home, Ajika Owens was on the other side of the door knocking, how is it staying your ground? How is it self-defense? And see, this is what we're going to discuss as we go on and, and we get better and we get more knowledge of the law. What is the standard for stand your ground? And so what we're going to have to do is probably investigate some other um, instances where there were a white person that was murdered. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what is the standard of stand your ground? Is it someone coming on your property? If it's someone saying threatening things to you? I'm at a loss. Because this is, you know, I'm going to tell you, I have pulled up um, on my computer there were a report by NBC on YouTube, and this woman says, or a man respond, um, comments, this story has completely shocked us here in Sweden. I can't imagine the pain those kids are going through. Have we lost all sense of humanity, decency, or of decency? How is the law being interpreted? No charges filed? Prayers for these beautiful children and the family. This comment was made prior to her being arrested. How black people are being treated in this country is really very serious. If you're a black person and you're watching this video, I understand and I recognize it's hard. The pause that I do, my loss of words, it's because, it's because it's painful because I understand this is an attack on black people. That this can happen to any one of us. To me, you, your mother, your children. And it's becoming acceptable in this country. And I'm just not of the mind that we sit around and we wait and accept it that we really have to create change. Our children will not, do not deserve being born in a country that hates them, that treats them like they're, like they're less than animals. Black people are at risk of extinction. There is a clear case of genocide occurring in this country. And if you're a black person, I really want you to take this seriously. I really want you to get engaged with me. I can't do this by myself and I can't I, I, I keep saying that because I want change. I have some ideas on how we can create change, but I need support. I need other Americans, black Americans. Americans to recognize that this has to stop. It can't continue. This woman was 35 years old. I believe she was 35 years old, 34, 35 years old with four kids. 
Our kids are going to be traumatized for the rest of their life. What's probably going on over and over in their head is we shouldn't have, but what if we didn't go play in a playground? You know that. Adults will think, what if I didn't? What if I, you know? And so I kind of want to discuss the sheriff, the, the sheriff, um, you know, I might, I'm gonna, I think I'm, I might put in the video of him um, and how he spoke of it. Because what concerns me is that she was charged with, with um, manslaughter, not homicide. That it was manslaughter. I need to pause you guys. So, let's talk about the interpretation of the law. Why did it take them so long to arrest this woman? Um, the neighbor who the little boy ran to for help, she did an interview. And she said that the sheriffs or the officers barely um, questioned her that they only asked a couple of questions. And this is what happens. But what, 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 what's occurring is that when things happen to black people in this country, there is a strong force that's anti-black. That they do not want the white person to pay the price or be penalized or to be disciplined or be prosecuted for killing black people. As I see her and I think about it, I mean, you know, I'm a human being and I don't, I don't have, I'm not racist about anyone, anything, okay? And what always comes to mind is like, what's wrong with these people? Like, we're not doing anything to you. We're just trying to live in this country like everyone else. What creates such hate for people who've done nothing to you, who was born, who endured slavery and the repercussions of slavery. Black people, like what did we do? It's just like, like honestly, I want to discuss this intelligently and I need to move forward. Um, but what, what's ha what happens to me, and this is really very honest, my mind is going blank. My mind is going blank because it's very painful to me. And I believe it's a uh, neurological response. The fight, fight, flight, or, or freeze response is that my mind does not want to keep, like I'm thinking about what occurred so I, we can discuss it and I can speak to you intelligently and my mind keeps going blank because as I think about it, it it's painful to me. That was a 35 year old woman who has four children and she did nothing. The neighbor talks glowingly about how a good a person she was and this woman kills her. And so what I want to talk about is like, what kind of mindset do you have that you think it's okay to pull out your gun and shoot a woman who's standing there with her child through the door? And then when this happens, the law enforcement takes his time and drags his feet on addressing the killing of a human being. I did a previous video about the value of life. Like that's that's what got me fucked up. It's like, why is there such a lack of value of human beings? This woman is dead. Her children's lives are gonna be ruined. And white people, if you if you're looking. If you're watching, how do you, this is not okay. 
I'm doing this to get black people, rally black people together so we can finally get real legislation that this country recognizes that we are unequal, that America has broken their promise, and that we're at risk of, of, of extinction. And to the white people, please comment. Tell me, how do you feel about white people like yourself shooting a 35-year-old woman? She may have been 34. You're a woman through the door because a 58-year-old white woman is harassing children. Children. And family, I do not want you to become desensitized. I do not want you to think, this is what happens. Oh, this is America. This is how we live. No. No. I don't want to sit here and do this. I want to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. But I can't because I'm a black woman. I have to spend the rest of my life trying to liberate black people because there is a force a consciousness that want to kill us want to remove us from existence this woman shot her through the door when she initiated it just like Trayvon Martin and the Zimmerman guy they just harassing black people for no reason. What do I want to talk about here, you guys? I know this video is kind of corny, right? So, uh, how am I going to? How am I going to talk about this with you guys intelligently? But I'm sounding crazy. I'm, I'm literally having a mental block. And, and I watched the videos and I saw some stuff. And what, again, I want to do a compare, a compare, comparison, a contrast and comparison. Um, to, um, so we're putting this on the record about Aja Cook Owens being murdered. We're going to follow the case. And one of the things I wanted um, you guys to be aware of is that I can't find the name of the judge. And that's one of the things that it's it's common. Why aren't news outlets naming this judge? They're saying a Marion County judge, the judge, a judge. And you guys, if you follow my channel, if you know me, everyone keeps thinking it's law enforcement. It's all these other agencies. It's the judges. I have a I have a website that I'm monitoring judges. So once I finally get the name of this judge, we're gonna research the background of this judge and we're gonna watch this judge. Cause the first thing I have an issue with is that the prosecutor asked for two hundred thousand dollar bond and he gave I think like one hundred and forty five thousand. He gave one hundred and fifty four thousand dollar bond. I don't know what's common and usual. Is it what when when the prosecutor requests something. Is it common or normal for the judge to adhere to what the prosecutor asks? Or is it a toss-up that the judge goes on based on what they think? The prosecutor asked for $200,000. And the judge gave $154,000. So these are the things that we want to talk about. And we want to identify, we want to highlight, and as we move on, we want to um, compare contrast. Uh, so again, I want this is a um, <laughs> this is like a joint effort. I want you to watch the videos. If you if you know of other cases that are similar, or you can discuss something that relates to this, because again, what we're doing is comparing, contrasting. So we we need to know about other cases where. It was something similar, and the judge adhered to what the prosecutor said. That the cases were very similar, and the defendant 
Um, she did, she didn't have a record. That's what the judge said. Um, but my problem is that it's clear that this woman initiated all of this. It can't be self-defense if she initiated everything. If she was harassing the children. It can't be self-defense if you're standing on the other side of the door. You know? Family, please um, bear with me on this one because, again, this is a hard one for me. This is a hard one for me because this woman had a history of being aggressive and abusive. And um, I'm going to put an interview in here that the neighbor put and the neighbor discussed. I'm going to put an interview in so you can see what the neighbor said. And so the neighbor um, is being interviewed and she discloses all the information. So the information that we see um, in the interview is the information that the detective should have. But based on the woman, the neighbor, where the little boy, the little boy ran to a woman's house when his mother was shot. And I believe it was a neighbor that um, he, his family was friends with. This apparently was an apartment complex and they were all friends and they were all neighbors. That this woman was a nuisance. And see, what I'm thinking about is society. I'm thinking about that we have laws, rules, and guidelines to protect society. And if a woman behaves so egregiously, so recklessly for human life, it's saying that it's acceptable. This is how culture and what's common is determined in a society. If this woman can harass children in the neighborhood, scream at them from playing on in a, in a, in a playground, in, a, in an apartment complex, call them the N-word in nasty, disgusting words, and then the people that are elected as law enforcement and judges Take it so lightly. I really hope that you stay with me because I know that I'm not being, this is not pretty. And I'm really struggling. And I don't understand. I, if, if, if there's other black people, if you are black American and you're not moved by this, what to say she simply knocked on the door the woman shot her through the closed door with her son nine years old standing next to her the n-word slaves other profanity b words you name it this was not the first incident this has happened numerous times. That was the mother of Ajika A.J. Owens, who, along with family and friends, is demanding the arrest of the white neighbor who shot and killed her daughter, apparently over a dispute involving the victim's children. The shooting occurred in Ocala, Florida, this past Friday night, with very few answers coming from Marion County Sheriff Billy Woods, who has since framed the incident as a longtime neighborhood feud. This characterization of a feud has been picked up by the media, of course. But, as is often the case, there is much more to the story. And according to friends and witnesses, the sheriff's framing is inaccurate. The case puts stand-your-ground laws back into the spotlight as investigators determine whether Florida's shoot-first law applies to a case involving a black woman ringing a doorbell and getting shot through a closed door. Four days since Owens' death, the shooter's identity has not yet been released. A.J. Owens was the mother of four children, who you see here. Isaac, age 12, 
Israel, age nine, Africa, age seven, and Titus, who is just three years old. Joining me now is someone who knew these children and who witnessed the aftermath of the shooting, Phyllis Willis, Phyllis Wills, I'm sorry, and her son, Kingston. They are neighbors of A.J. Owens. Thank you both for being here. Um, and Phyllis, um, I really appreciate you being here. So I want to start uh, just by asking you um, where you live in proximity to where this took place and in proximity to the shooter. I live right across the street from the shooter. And I could um, literally walk out my door in her apartments right there. Okay. And this field where the kids were playing is in between your home and where the shooter lives. Is that correct? The field is across the street from my home. Her apartment is directly across the street from my home. Now you said so her apartment. The field, oh, go on. Correct. Go on. We live in we live in an apartment complex. So gotcha. the field is in between her home and another another uh, quadruplex. So you were able to see the aftermath of what, of what happened. Could you hear what happened as well? I did not hear what happened. I was serving dinner to my kids. Um, uh, her son, I have on video, banged on my door really loud. And I was like, what in the world? Like, he banged so loud. And I opened the door, and he was gasping for air. And he's like, please, somebody help me. Call 911. My mom's been shot. As soon as he told me that his mother was shot, I already knew who shot her because... I mean, there there would be only one person out here that's been just so nasty to everybody. Tell me about that. The lady is just not all there in the head. She's really nasty to the children. She's really nasty. She's She throws racial slurs to the kids. Um, she, you know, she tells them if they don't get off their property, she's told my daughter that she was going to be raped. Um... She said a lot of nasty stuff. She's called him retarded. She's, you know, done all types of stuff. We've made numerous police reports on this lady about her and the way that she talks to our children, and nothing has been done. And were you surprised, given the fact that, as you said, that she has menaced and bullied the children before, that she was not arrested and charged? I'm very surprised. I'm really more hurt than anything. Do you... Do you trust the sheriff in this town? I do not trust him at all. Why? Because he, you know, he could have already made an arrest. If it was the other way around, she would have already been in jail. And do you mind if I ask Kingston a question? Would that be okay? Go ahead. So, Kingston, how are you, cutie? Um, I understand... I'm good. Okay, I understand that you are best friends with Isaac. Is he your good friend? Yeah. Well, I um, I understand that he was a hero, that he um, tried to call 911, and he was very heroic that day. Do, were, did you ever experience the the lady um, that your mom is talking about being mean to to you and your, your friends? Yes. What kind yes. of stuff did she do? She she would always come outside and, like, tell us to get off her property, and she would just cuss at us and flick us off. And, Mom, let me ask you, you this question. Um, you know, there is this story about her talking about her property. Does she own the apartment complex? None of us own anything. We lease. So she's a renter. The field where the kids play, they play on the other side of the field. The field is so big, they play on the whole other side that's not even close to her apartment. She just intentionally would come out. Every time she would see the children out, she would intentionally come out her door to antagonize the children every single time. And um, She'd come did you out know record the kids. She would record them. She would cuss at them. 
call them names. She would sit in her truck and turn her radio up really loud so that they would, you know, not want to hear it and annoy them. She would beep their horn. She would like lay on her horn in her truck for a long period of time to try to startle the kids. You know, at one point she showed my daughter, there was the children were out there in the field and she waved a gun at them for them to get off of the field. She's done so many things, so many things to these kids. Wow. Let me ask you one last question. And I wanna uh, ask a question about AJ. Um, did you know her well and what was she like? She was amazing. She was amazing. She was a great mother to her kids. She always went to work and came straight home to her kids. When she came outside with her children, she would throw football with not only her kids, but all of the kids. She encouraged my son to sign up for football and I couldn't take him because I'm working. So she went and signed him up herself and took him to football practice and all that stuff. She's amazing. And what do you want to see happen next? I want justice. I want to see this lady in jail. She's a monster. Well, I appreciate uh, you coming. We all up here appreciate you coming down and telling us what you saw and know. Last question, have the police interviewed you? Briefly, but not really. Um, I maybe got one or two questions and that was it. Like even the night that that she passed away, they never, you know, they never came around interviewing anybody. It was, you know, it's, I don't know. It's just not right. Well, I, I will note that the legacy of Stand Your Ground in this country, um, and I will quote from The Guardian, the legacy of Stand Your Ground is this Wild West mentality that everything can be resolved with guns, said law professor Thaddeus, Thaddeus Hoffmeister. Kenneth Nunn, a law professor, added, all you have to say is I was in fear for my life and no charges will be brought. I think a lot of police officers believe that, too, and are not arresting people for shooting folks. Um, it is horrible. It happened to Ralph Yarl, shot um, through a door, and it's now happened to A.J. Owens. It is unjust. And we're going to keep following this story. Phyllis Wills and uh, Kingston, my friend, thank you very much for being here. We appreciate you both. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so based on what we're hearing and seeing, investigators really didn't investigate the story. According to, um, I think his name is Phyllis Wills. She said they barely even questioned her. The detectives acknowledged that Susan Lorenz admits to hurling the N-word and racial comments to these children. I want to know why there are not any hate crime charges. I'm not going to make this video very long because I'm really struggling and I don't want to waste your time. Um, I'm sitting here and I'm trying my best to discuss this and I'm, and I'm really, really having a loss because this is, is the message that there's open season on black people. That if you want to kill a black person, then it's okay. The law enforcement is going to do the bare minimum in terms of investigation that just like in the case of Kyle Rittenhouse. They don't want you, they don't want them to be penalized or held accountable. I apologize for my demeanor. I really do. Um, I'm making this video as introductory, um, I hope to be able to follow the case and you guys follow along with me. I really need you to subscribe to this channel and comment and do a joint effort because I'm being very honest with you. I'm not going to stop, but this is really very hard. And if I know that people are watching the videos, that they are commenting and they're willing to help us get justice, it will make it easier for me. Family, I, it keeps happening, so I, I have concerns about us becoming desensitized to this. 
as she said that the police officer keep um they're framing it as a neighbor dispute no this is a white supremacist who hates black people and they think it's okay to harm black people that you can shoot a black woman through the door just because you want to and you can this is, was a white woman who lived in an apartment and apparently according to um you know i'm gonna put in the uh video of the hearing when they did the, the hearing for her bail she's a miserable white woman and oftentimes people in the, in the family they don't like how I explain racism. These are empty, angry people who don't like themselves. Yes, they're groomed to not like us. They're groomed to hate us. They're groomed to harm us. That comes from a nasty place. That comes from an angry, unhappy, miserable place. That's when you're angry and you're miserable and you want to take out your anger and your misery on someone else. Since we've bought, been brought here, we have been the easy target. We continue to be an easy target. And family, I don't want us to be an easy target anymore. I want to lead us to liberation. But I keep on saying, I can't do it by myself. I just watched this video and I want to discuss this intelligently. I want to talk about the stand your ground. What, how is the law interpreted? What is the standard? I want to compare and contrast this case with other similar cases. And I will. And I'm asking you to please help me. If you have a knowledge of the law, if you can contribute any insight, if you have an opinion, or if you just want to vent, I need you. In this country, black women are raised to believe that we're strong black women and we're supposed to, we can do it on our own, that we don't need anyone and we can get through on our own. But that's not the truth. <laughs> One day I recognized, and I think I was in my 30s. I recognized, because that's how I was raised. I was raised by a single mom who taught me to go to school, get an education, work hard, and fight for um, myself and stand up for myself and be self sufficient and be strong. And one day, I think I was in my 30s, I recognized that I'm a woman. That I'm supposed to love and nurture. That I'm not supposed to, um, that I shouldn't be expected to have all the strength. That's masculinity, that's males. This strong black woman was knocking on the door to ask this woman why was she throwing things at her children? Why was she calling her children in words and harassing them? That's how we're raised. To take care of our families and be strong. And I'm just honest. I'm tired of being strong. That this is really hard. But I'm not going to stick my head in this hand and act like it's not happening. I'm asking you to help me. If you have any suggestions, if you know of anything that can assist us in determining or demonstrating that we're not free and we're not equal and that we need legislation to protect us because we're, in, we're endangered. There's a black genocide going on in this country and someone needs we need to address it and be effective and efficient in addressing it. I'm going to revisit this. <laughs> you guys, I have to... <laughs> Let me tell you. Generally, I'm pretty thorough. Right? 
and I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, how am, am I going to research and follow these stories and have my sanity? What we're taught in this culture, protect your energy. Take care of yourself. If you don't take care of yourself, who's going to take care of you? And that's not, those are not the rules that I live by. I live by the rules that I'm here for you. And we're supposed to be here for each other. That's not me, me, me. It's we. That our fate is linked. It's that I need you. And I hope you need me. This woman shot a 34-year-old woman through the door while her children were standing there. The law enforcement took their time and waited to arrest her. That according to Phyllis Wills, Wills that they barely interviewed her. So listen, let me tell you this. I don't know if you follow my channel, and I've talked about this before. In the case of Trayvon Martin, when it happened, I didn't follow it. Because I have a black son. And forgive me for not following it. Since that time, I learned and I recognize George Zimmerman is not in prison because the judge did not apply the law appropriately. Stand your ground or self-defense does not apply if you are the person that engaged. He engaged him. Trayvon Martin was engaged by, by George Zimmerman. If we look at the facts and, and, and listen to what happened he called the police. Trayvon Martin didn't just jump him. They're trying to say that he, in, in the case of Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman, they're, they're supposing that he was following him, that it's okay to follow him. No, it's not okay to follow someone and harass them and make them feel unsafe. That's not okay. See, what, we gonna, what we're going to do here is we're going to interpret how things are interpreted when they're black people. Contrast, compare and contrast to how it's interpreted when they're white people. Family, I love you <laughs> like I love air. And I, I see a way through this. I'm not of a mind that we have to, in 10 years from now, still worry about our little boys and little girls being murdered by white supremacists, by being treated unfairly. You know, I'm going to tell you a story. I was in the room last night, and um, we were talking about children. They were talking about, the room was talking about children and how black children are being um, discriminated against in school. And one of my friends, her son was being harassed by a, a little white boy who clearly had emotional issues. That he would he came out and said that he was gonna kill this woman's child. I don't remember, I think the kid was maybe under 10. It was a little boy. And the school wouldn't address it. That of what it ended up having eventually, they removed her son from the class, saying that he needed additional help. This is what they do and how they frame us. And I'm I am witnessing and showing you that this is really hard. And it's by design. They know how the brain works. They know how human behavior works. That we feel beaten down and broken and hopeless. And we stop fighting. We stop working towards our liberation because we think it's hopeless and it's imp impossible to happen. This is hurtful to me. This makes me, infuriates me. I don't feel hopeless. I feel hurt. I feel hurt that I was born in a country that think it's okay to harm black men and women. It is barbaric and it is savage. 
Listen, y'all. I'm gonna make sure I covered everything because it's gonna. I, I, I gotta stop because this this is a lot for me. Um, I'm gonna revisit this. I wanna. I wanna research. Y'all, if y'all know anything, li please leave a comment and help me. <laughs> I'm dead ass serious. Um, because one of the things I wanna compare and contrast. Should we discuss the bail? Because the bail was only two was only one hundred and fifty four thousand dollars, and the state requested two hundred thousand dollars. Is that common and usual for the judge not to agree? I guess it could be a toss up. As we do this more often, we'll learn, right? Um, we're going to learn about the hate crimes in Florida. Are there any hate crimes on the on the on the um on the record? Or on the books. If there's hate crimes, why is it hasn't any hate crimes been? Um, why the hate crime hasn't been charged? This is what I'm thinking because it's another case that I, I I'm following too. But specifically, what I'm thinking is that this is the initial um, uh, beginning of the case, like in the case of Jordan Neely. I think also it was a charge of manslaughter. So, I, you guys, I, I try to give them the benefit of the doubt. I don't err on the side of, oh, they're just going to come and get us and they're trying to harm us. Okay? That's not being a critical thinker. I'm thinking with the facts that they have, that they can only charge them with based on what they have. After further um, investigation, after further interviews of witnesses, that there's a likelihood of possibility from additional charges. And so these are the things that we're going to talk about on this channel. Because what we're showing is that black people are not equal and free in this country. That America has broken their promise to black people under the 14th Amendment. And family, if you're living well, you got a good job, and you're striving, you're going on vacation, you got a nice home, your kids are being raised well, I'm happy for you. Praise God. But I also want you to consider us, all of us, and understand our, link, our fate is linked. That was a 34-year-old woman with four children. You heard her say she was a good girl. She encouraged a little boy to, to play football and help. You know, my kids are grown, but I, I had that life. We were, we're, we're housewives and PTA moms and the parent that participated and helped out. spiritual side of me is like God why do you take why do you take the good ones like why did this happen to this woman um I think I'm gonna wrap this up um I hope you're not deterred by this video because I'm <laughs> just very melancholy about it um I'm just unhappy and my emotions are very human. Then I sit here and I watch Tori Reed just can able is able to like report the news very matter of factly, and how she just reported the new news and discussed all the important aspects. I want to move towards that direction because I'm not here for entertaining. I am reporting the news, but I'm specifically detailing how black people are not free in this country and how there needs to be an update to the 14th Amendment. It's clear and concise and there are legal laws to protect black people because we are clearly at risk of extinction. Listen, y'all, I'm a 20th and this is Reunite, Sandy Speaks. Y'all come fuck with me. This class of these sea skeletons, they killing us for walking, killing us for jogging, kill us in our homes and fabricating and hiding. Uh, when we had Sandra Blaine's and Trayvon Martins, if when you kill us, your family was a target. If your children was orphans, uh, when you had compassion and next time you approach us, yeah, we fed up, uh, this is built up. Uh, your city up in smoke, homeboy, we had enough. And I ain't tasting riots of violence, heighten the climate. I'm saying you smack me, I'm punching you in your iris. Retaliation is prescribed, in both Bible and Quran, in the matters of the slang. See an eye for an eye, especially if the Justice Department do not comply.